In this video, we're going to have a look at a summary of the various types of function arguments. So we basically got five different kinds. First of all, we looked at positional arguments, and that's where you define a function and it has some parameters, and then we supply arguments that are passed to those parameters just by virtue of their position. They just match up via position. Secondly, we've seen that you can have default values for arguments in the parameter list of your function. So with default arguments here, it has three parameters, but two of them have default values. So we only have to supply at the minimum one argument. We can supply values for these, but if we don't, it's fine. The default value will be used. And I've used that here, and I've only supplied one value to this function. I could supply all three, but I've just supplied one, and the defaults have taken care of the others. We've also seen keyword arguments. So this is where you take a function that you could supply positional arguments to, but instead you name the arguments that you're supplying. So we end up with a thing that looks like this. And as far as the function is concerned, it's the same as if you'd used positional arguments, except these don't have to be in any particular order when you pass them to the function because you've named them specifically. Then we've got variable arguments. With variable arguments, traditionally we most often perhaps use the word args for these. So remember we've got a, an asterisk and then the word args, or you can use another word if you want. And that returns a thing called a tuple, which we'll look at later. And the point here about the tuple is that you can iterate through it with a syntax like this. So you can pass zero or as many arguments as you like to this variable arguments function. And you can iterate over them like this. And there are other things you can do with them, which we'll see later on. Finally, we've got perhaps the most complicated variable length keyword arguments. So when we call the function, we're just supplying keyword arguments like before. The difference is we can make up the actual parameter names here. And the way this works is, so we get this thing here, which I've called KWOGs or quogs, which is kind of a traditional name for it. If you can have traditions in something as of recent an origin as Python. And we've iterated through it. It's actually a thing called a dictionary or dict. Uh, so we can loop over it with a very similar syntax to what we had here for the variable arguments, where we had a tuple in args. Uh, but here, when we loop over the dictionary, we only get keys. And to get the values, we have to use a syntax like this. Now, whatever you do, don't stress about all this. It's a lot to remember. So I suggest not really bothering. I would suggest just try all this out because as you see more Python syntax, all of this will begin to make more and more sense. And as you continue to code in Python, you'll start to think to yourself, oh, I could use variable keyword arguments here, or I could use variable arguments or whatever you like. But I'm going to give you a little exercise here. It's a little bit of a challenging exercise, and that's why I've typed all this stuff out for you to refer to. So it's all this stuff is in one place. The exercise is this. Try to define a single function that accepts all three of the following. So it has one or more positional arguments. Then it has zero or more variable arguments, and then it has zero or more variable keyword arguments and make the function print out all of the arguments that it receives. So have a go at that and we'll look at how to do it in the next video. Don't worry if you get stuck, it is quite hard. If you refer to this here, I think you'll be able to figure out how to do it. And this file is called arguments underscore summary dot pi. This is one of the last free videos that I'll be uploading to YouTube from my premium Python course. But don't forget that if you register free on my website, caveofprogramming.com, not only will you get access to a bunch of completely free courses, 
right away. But also when I hold a sale, you can get notified about it and potentially you can get any of my premium courses at a sharp discount. And don't worry if you do click the box to say that you don't mind receiving marketing emails from me, I'm going to be emailing you at most once a month. So please do consider registering free to caveofprogramming.com and you'll get immediate access to a bunch of courses. Thank you so much. And until next time, happy coding.